Hey all, Mooch here. Welcome to Mining Your Moz episode 7. Today we're going to concentrate on battery chemistry and just a high level look. I know there are uh, electrochemists and material engineers and scientists, researchers out there who are going to go like, what? At, at the simplification of some things in this video, but I just want to touch on some things a little bit, particularly some battery myths surrounding uh, model number prefixes being used as chemistries and things like that, and try to make some of this a little more understandable. Is do we have to worry about battery chemistry? And if we do, what should we be looking for? First thing you'll probably be asking me is what is battery chemistry? And primarily, it's the cathode, or the positive part of the battery, the material that's used for the positive part of the battery. Now that is an oxide of a metal. Um, it, it could be manganese, cobalt, nickel, aluminum, uh, etc. And those will primarily define it. But it's also the um, anode, the negative part of the battery, the materials it uses, and the electrolyte, the fluid that runs between it that the lithium ions move back and forth between. But primarily, it's what the positive material is. We'll go over some of those later on when we get into more detail. Um, now, the nominal voltage, which causes a lot of confusion, that 3.6, 3.7 volt you see with a lot of lithium ion batteries, that's also a way to identify the chemistry of the battery. Uh, your AA, AAA alkaline batteries, 1.5 volts. Nickel metal hydrides and uh, NICADs, 1.2 volts. With our lithium ion, they're 3.6, 3.7, rarely. That's a slightly higher voltage battery. And also for the lipos, they're the same. Those are lithium ions. And that's the way of identifying the chemistry, but it's mostly about what chemicals, what compounds it uses inside, which determines a lot its performance, its longevity, etc. Now, ha, huh, the biggest thing is, the information that's online about the chemistries we use is very outdated. A lot of it's just wrong. IMR, INR, and ICR are not battery chemistries. They are manufacturer model number or part number prefixes. Now, they are used primarily to point to certain battery chemistries, certain materials that are used inside the battery. But as you'll see later on, it can't always be used reliably, and it's also misused badly, making it almost useless to shop or purchase batteries by this. And I know there's so much information online, older information, that's saying you have to buy IMR and always avoid ICR. Well, that's just not true uh, for a lot of reasons. <sighs> Particularly uh, IFR also, but this is for a different chemistry, A123 batteries. Uh, it's a lower voltage chemistry that we can't use as, as vapors, but some other people can use because uh, it's a 3.2, 3.3 volt chemistry. So it runs down under 3 volts towards 2.7 volts. It's just too low for us. Um, one of the big problems with, uh, which is actually a myth, you hear that ICR, no, always avoid it. Those batteries are bad. Well, the problem is the HE4. A very popular battery two, three years ago. Now, an okay mid-performing battery is ICR 18650 HE4. And that ICR is not the chemistry in here being used by LiPos, which is why a lot of people would say, hey, avoid ICR batteries. Well, a lot of ICR batteries use the same chemistry that's in a lot of the other batteries that we use, something called a hybrid chemistry, and which I'll go over over here. So. ICR itself is not something to avoid, and that's part of the problems with trying to take these model number prefixes and call them chemistries. <sighs> IMR batteries, the, the holy grail, what we're always supposed to be using, you see in all these older posts, because it's supposed to be the safest chemistry, which is called LMO, we'll deal with later as I knock things down. Um, the ones that are tagged IMR are not this safe chemistry. They're the same thing that are used by the HE4. That's one of these hybrid chemistries, the chemistries that float in the middle of the safety scale. It's, it, ha ha, rant coming. I don't know if this is just games by the companies or whether they're just ignorant of what IMR really meant or if they're seeing all these websites saying, you gotta use IMR, or they're just using it as a generic term for non-lipo or uh, you know, anything other than that most volatile chemistries that's used in LiPo batteries and internal um, batteries, internal uh, mods with internal batteries. So it's just a big unknown. It, it might just be a generic term they use just to take up space and people go, oh, IMR, that's awesome, good. Most of those batteries, especially the rewraps, 
since the batteries they're rewrapping are one of the other chemistries, the hybrid chemistries or chemistries in the middle, namely not the safest one, what IMR used to point to, uh, or what uh, LiPo batteries are, but something in the middle, you really can't use it for anything. It's just a useless term, and it's not something we should pay attention to, whatever reason China rewrappers are using it for. Now, Samsung, Sony, LG, Panasonic, Sanyo, there are no IMR tag batteries that we use anymore. And the ICR ones can be the LiPo chemistry, which I actually can't find any we're using now, or this middle chemistry that has one ingredient, cobalt, that LiPos have, but have other ingredients in it to tame the co cobalt down and make it what we call a hybrid battery, mid-level. Good performance close to a LiPo, but without a lot of the volatility of the LiPo. So in the end, <laughs> is the chemistry important? If IMR, INR, and ICR don't mean anything, if China just slaps IMR on any chemistry battery, does the chemistry matter anymore? Not really. If it's, as long as it's not a LiPo, they're all about the same. They're hybrid chemistries or a variation on one of the hybrid chemistries in the middle of the safety scale. We're not using any of the safest chemistry, one, what's called LMO over here. And as long as we avoid LiPo, which is LCO, which we'll go through over here, all the rest are about the same in the middle. So it's really not that important and a lot of it depends really on the construction of the battery and its internal protection. That's going to more with the specifications mean a whole lot more than its chemistry, which uh, particular hybrid chemistry it uses, whether you use NCA or NMC or uh, some other variation, LNO. Um, so we should shop by specs, not by these chemistry or these chemistry myths, particularly the rewrap batteries or the China manufactured batteries, which most say IMR on it. Now, if it says INR, odds are it's one of these uh, hybrid chemistries that have nickel in them. That's okay. That's being a little more honest with us. But otherwise, for IMR, since there are no batteries that use that LMO chemistry that the IMR prefix used to point to, it's just useless. And it's, it's either deception on the part or ignorance on the part of the company that's using IMR. Now, a very important thing is short circuits do matter <laughs> for any chemistry. Um, when I say, you know, don't worry about chemistry and stuff like that, except for lipos, particularly because short circuit on a lipo can be much more exciting and a lot more dangerous than a short circuit with other cells. Now, depending on the internal construction of the battery and its internal protection, their particular devices, if I could stop knocking things over, um, can make a difference in how that battery reacts in a short circuit. Since we don't know, and it takes a significant amount of testing to quantify what the risks of one battery might be, and there's so many little differences in construction, internal protection devices, the chemistry, etc., it's just better to not do the short circuits. We can't quantify the danger levels, so you just don't misuse or abuse them because the risks are very high if you do, particularly for LiPo. But for other chemistries too, we can't just say, oh, well, it says IMR on the battery, that, that's the safest chemistry. No, it's not. We don't use any IMR batteries, any of that LMO chemistry. It's some of the ones in the middle, they're a little more volatile. Uh, what we'll address now, that's most of the basics. What we'll get down is a few more details. For those of you who are like, whoa, that's enough tech, um, you could cut it off here. For the rest, I'm going to go a little more into what's inside a battery and what are the battery chemistries that are out there and which prefixes here, prefixes, prefixes, uh, match up with them. And then in another video, we'll go into much, much more detail as to what's involved inside a battery, what happens. But let's dive into this. Now, for a lithium ion battery, we were talking about the cathode. This is the material that the chemistry refers to and what some of the prefixes, prefixes do. Uh, that set up here, that's part of the positive part of the battery. That's a paste that's smeared onto an aluminum electrode, or what they call a current collector. It's a piece of plastic separating the positive and negative parts. This is porous to allow the ions to move through. Then you have the anode, the negative part of the battery, which is usually graphite. And then that's smeared onto copper foil. And all of this becomes layers. Think of it running this way. And they spirally roll the layers up connected to the positive negative part of a can, 18650 can, you've got the battery. When the cathode, or when the battery is charged, the cathode has the lithium in it. 
Um, like the lipo, lithium cobalt oxide is the chemistry. So there's lithium here and then a cobalt oxide, a metal oxide. When you use a charger to force the electrons, essentially strip the electrons off the lithium that's in the cathode here, the electrons are sent over to the negative side, to the copper and to the graphite. Now those ions, the lithium wants to rejoin with the electrons, so it moves across through this electrolyte which is organic solvents and a lithium salt. So there's already lithium already in there to help out. And so the ions start moving across here to rejoin up with the electrons and it all gets stored in this graphite and all the nooks and crannies of the graphite. And that's a charged battery. The lithium ions with their electrons are sitting here. When you want to discharge through a coil or a light bulb or whatever you might have there, then the electrons get stripped off. The ions move back join up with the electrons and your battery is discharged. Now for the chemistry themselves, we're going to run from quote the safest chemistries, namely the ones that um, if they do go into thermal runaway, uh, that self-destruction if they're brought up to way too high a temperature, the safer ones run at a lower temperature when that happens, a less violent reaction, less of a chance of setting the organic solvents, which are quite flammable, on fire. And by the way, that electrolyte down there there's no acid in our lithium ion batteries. It is a lithium salt dissolved in organic solvents, paint thinner, roughly. It's in totally different materials, but it's just an organic solvent that's used and it just fills all the nooks and crannies inside the battery. It's not sloshing around, everything's pressed very hard together, but it helps the ions move back and forth. So the first one, safest of the chemistries, LFP, lithium ferrous phosphate or lithium iron phosphate, you have to get it up to the highest temperature before we will go into runaway. So it's the hardest to set on fire. And then the reaction is the gentlest of well, that kind of thing, thermal runaway. So this is one reason why it's considered one of the safest ones. Now, this is not a chemistry we can use. This is uh, the IFR here, and I'll join up the prefixes with the chemistries in a bit. Um, Runs at a lower voltage, we're really not using it much, if at all. Some box miners might use it, or you might be able to use uh, two LFP batteries in series. Going up a little bit is LMO, lithium manganese oxide. But it's a very safe one. Yes, it's a little bit easier to bring in the thermal runaway. The reaction temperature is a little bit higher, but it's not going to typically never catch as fire, and it's not uh, nearly as violent a reaction once it goes into runaway. Then we start moving up a little bit to the middle of the pack. NMC is uh, very common in the batteries that we use, nickel, manganese, cobalt. Essentially, they've taken the manganese, uh, which was the only metal other than the lithium that's used to transport back and forth, and they've added some cobalt to it. Well, guess where the cobalt, why they added cobalt? Because that's the only metal in the LiPo. A high performance, very volatile, but that cobalt offers a performance. So how do you bring up a lower performing Chemistry like LMO, lithium manganese oxide, it'll add some cobalt to it. You can also add nickel for other performance characteristics. And you get one of the most common chemistries that we use, NMC. Most of the batteries we use as vapors is NMC. But also NCA, nickel cobalt aluminum. So instead of using the manganese, you use aluminum. Otherwise, you have nickel and cobalt. Cobalt for performance, nickel for aluminum for other characteristics. Uh, Samsung 25R is NCA chemistry. And I believe some Panasonic's. The higher capacity ones are also. Now, NMC is what we call a hybrid. Namely, it's got manganese from the safe end, some cobalt from the more volatile end, and it floats in the middle. I'm not sure if the industry calls NCA a hybrid. I do, because uh, it's in the middle. Even though it doesn't have manganese, it sits in the middle and becomes sort of a general purpose range. Not quite as safe as these chemistries, but not nearly as volatile as a lipo. Now, I've seen also listed NMC LCO. In my mind, if, if you're just adding LCO, which is just more cobalt, to a chemistry that already has cobalt in it, it should just be a higher cobalt ratio NMC cell. But I've seen it listed specifically this way, so I'm listing it also. That just the higher cobalt just makes it a little more reactive, a little more volatile, goes into thermal runaway, slightly lower temperature. Um, once you start getting up in this range. It becomes easier for there to be a fire uh, or the temperature to be high enough to actually ignite the organic solvents and the electrolytes and get the fireball. That's why the lipo reactions, when they go, to, go into thermal runaway, are so bad. 
And then the last one is LCO, lithium cobalt oxide. No manganese, no cobalt, excuse me, no aluminum, no nickel. It's just cobalt oxide with the lithium that will be used to transport charge back and forth. That's your lipos. It will go into thermal runaway at the lowest temperature. It'll go through thermal runaway at the highest temperature, high enough to ignite the solvents. So you get a fireball in addition to the most violent reaction. And this is one reason why this chemistry is a problem for uh, a lot of uses. Now, internal battery mods use lipos primarily, but they have protection circuits in there. It's not nearly as dangerous as, let's say, an unprotected or uh, unregulated uh, device just using pouch lipos. Now, this can be in any shape, any size battery, doesn't matter, this is just the chemistry, the shape and size determined by the manufacturer. So something I wanna say first, which I forgot to do earlier, is what IMR, ICR, INR actually mean. The I at the beginning stands for lithium, of course. <laughs> the second character, M, N, and R stand for manganese, nickel, and cobalt to indicate the metal that's being used. And then R stands for round, which is a really good sign that these aren't chemistries because round has nothing to do with the chemistry of a cell. It has to do with the shape, namely what part number, what model number this might be referring to or family of batteries it might be referring to. Um, and then the metal just referred to what metals are mixed in over here. So there is some correlation between chemistries, but it can get complicated. If we look at like LFP, that is IFR. I for lithium, F for iron or ferrous, and R for round. And that's the only one it goes to. Now, LMO, lithium manganese oxide, there's the M from the manganese. So this is IMR. Now, NMC uh, is also manganese also, but they go with the nickel, N. So this is typically with INR. But interestingly, NMC is also indicated because of that C there by ICR. So there's a problem right there. We've got ICR, which everyone thinks is bad, thinks is cobalt, thinks is, excuse me, lipos, but it can be used for NMC. Now we've got NCA and the, the NMC here. I won't tag this one, um, just because it'll make things really complicated. But the ICR is also used for the cells that use the same thing as the lipos. Now the NCA is in this family with the IN family because it has nickel and stuff. So we can also, I don't know if it's any of them actually, oh wait, I'm sorry, the 25R. INR18650, that's 25R is NCA. So this is why this confusion in here is why you just can't say, oh, these are chemistries and oh, these are pointed different batteries. Because ICR can be a chemistry we use for a lot of different batteries or it can be for lipos. INR, not as much. Both of these are pretty well, you know, hybrid middle batteries in terms of safety and stuff, but it still becomes very confusing and it's just not something that we should be paying a lot of attention to. So really to, to finish up, is chemistry important? No, as long as we know we're not getting a lipo, unless we want a lipo, we want that LCL chemistry, we want the performance, either cylindrical or through the uh, rectangular uh, packs that we might use in a box mod, we should be looking at specs. What's the current rating that we need? What kind of capacity do we want? We're, all the batteries we get, we can't find any lithium manganese oxide, any IMR batteries. The ones labeled IMR from China aren't, and, or it's just being used as a generic term for non-lipo, so we can't use that for any kind of shopping. All the other batteries we can get are in here, these moderate ones or lipo. So really all you have to do is decide lipo or non-lipo and just not worry about ICR, IMR, INR, which are all confusingly interlinked to everything and used badly by so many other different companies. Now, to be fair, some batteries are marked correctly. There are battery companies and manufacturers that wrap either China manufactured cells or rewrap of the cells and say ICR uh, for a nickel manganese cobalt chemistry or we'll use INR for a similar um, nickel manganese cobalt chemistry. So in the end, go by specs. Get the right battery for the way you vape. 
The chemistry will almost take care of itself. Just make sure it's not a lipo unless you want it. So let me know down in the comments below. Uh, was this too technical? Are there other topics related to this you'd like to see? Uh, more detail about anything here? Uh, or also just general questions you might have that you'd like to see addressed in future videos. Any questions you do leave down below, I will consider them as topics for future videos. Uh, all the links can be down in the description section where you can uh, reach me. And thank you for watching.